Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Um, it's uh, this marks culmination of an interesting year, 81 years since this airfield saw the most interesting action that's happened um, in its wonderfully uh, interesting history, which is when the Americans departed here in British aircraft to take the first actions against the uh, Nazi-occupied Europe on behalf of America entering the war on the 2nd of July 1942. So I'm immensely grateful now that the recognition and the commitment made by service people of all ranks, of all natures, of all countries, we have Polish people buried in the Commonwealth war graves just down in Swantomorley Church, is now formally recognised by this wonderful memorial um, donated by the Airfields of Britain Conservation Trust, kindly put together by uh, Mr Kenneth Bannerman, the director. Um, I'm really grateful for you all coming along today, the Deerham Cadets as well, uh, Roger Atwell, Chairman, uh, Mary Halliday, um, and uh, Nick who's come up from Cambridgeshire to take the service as well. With that in mind, please do take photos, please do um, uh, get involved in the service and um, please do pass the word. We welcome people to come along and come see the airfield. We welcome people to come and uh, get involved in the history and there's a wonderful display put together by the Swanton Morley historian who lives just the other side of Beaton now, um, which he's put together and the top of the tower there. There's a wonderful view from the top and the uh, aircraft viewing tower. With that in mind, then I'm going to hand over to Nick, who's going to open the ceremony. Nick, thank you. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here with you today. Uh, as a Christian, I believe that those who have already given their lives in service of our country ha are watching us from a better place than we are in today. And it is a, an honour to, to recognise their service, our colleagues in light blue, our colleagues in dark blue, and our colleagues in green. Let's start with a prayer. God Almighty, remember your holy promise and look with love on all your people living and departed. On this day, we especially ask that you would hold forever all who suffered during conflict on behalf of their country, those who returned scarred by warfare, those who waited anxiously at home, and those who returned wounded and disillusioned, those who mourned, and those communities that were diminished and suffered loss. Remember too those who acted with kindly compassion, those who bravely risked their own lives for their comrades, and those who in the aftermath of war worked tirelessly for a more peaceful world. And as you remember them, remember us, O Lord. Grant us peace in our time and a longing for the day when people of every language, race and nation be brought into the unity of Christ's kingdom. This we ask in the name of the same, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I invite Roger Bannerman to give us a history of the airfield, please. Thank you very much. And thank you all very much for attending. Swanton Morley was first devised in the mid-1930s and as with all of our airfields, it inevitably took time to arise. So this is, without getting too technical here, a hybrid uh, mixture in terms of airfield construction between uh, an expansion period airfield, which was before World War II, and what was more uh, colloquially called an austerity period airfield of the war itself. So the airfield first opened in September 1940. 
and it's initially best remembered as being a major Royal Air Force light bomber airfield. Many attacks were made in enemy territory and then during, World, uh, during 1941 there was a particularly brave Victoria Cross one here by Huey Edwards. As the war gradually drew on, the focus of the airfield gradually but significantly shifted so it became also more involved in training and then also towards the end of the conflict uh, more to do with experimental work for example the bomber support development unit the airfield was frequently attracting the uh, attracting the attention of the Luftwaffe so with the, all the research we've done between November 1940 and July 1941 this airfield was actually attacked nine times thankfully without much damage but the Luftwaffe was rather persistent because there was the infamous Operation Gisela intruder sortie over much of eastern England in early March 1945 and it just shows you how dangerous things were generally that uh, an aircraft had just landed at Swanton Morley uh, and this was around the time the airfield was being attacked by an intruder so the crew very bravely immediately took off again to try and uh, uh, alleviate the situation and then for what it's worth it appears that Swanton Morley was one of the last two airfields in Britain to actually be attacked on the 20th of March 1945 so this airfield had a really busy not to mention tough war but it achieved so much in winning the second world conflict after the war there was a period of about 12 years whereby there was training for air navigation and signaling and then another very big change occurred in the late 1950s when the central servicing development establishment or CSDE came here from Winthorpe in Nottinghamshire where incidentally we unveiled a similar memorial just in the spring of last year. So this uh, element then remained at Swanton Morley until it eventually left the base as the airfield was closing during 1995. We've done a lot of research with records and what have you. So since then of course the army has moved in. Now as we know there are plans for the future but uh, again, as we say in our travels and acknowledging that, all we can just say to people uh, respectfully is that within reason, do what you can, please, to try and help save and honour Britain's disused airfields, whether active or, in this case, at least in a flying sense, disused. Enough to say they are becoming belatedly recognised as Britain's greatest ever physical assets. They have done so much for this country in so many ways. And I'm not just talking about winning wars and things like that as well. Just they are the most tremendous forces for good in our everyday lives. So we we just cannot remotely afford to lose our airfields, although it might not be immediately obvious to many of us. They are that important. So just please do all you can to help them and not forgetting all the remember all the very brief dedicated people who served there and in turn as well not forgetting their families it's the very least they all deserve and uh, therefore again we are really delighted and honoured to be able to provide this latest memorial to the one and only Swanton Morley Airfield and everyone who served here thank you very much I have here in this bowl some water. Now water is something that is essential to life. It's something that all of us require on a day-to-day -day basis. It's also got a long history in scripture. You may recall the Israelites going from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land. And one of the first tribulations they had to pass through was getting through the Red Sea. And Moses stood to the side of that and God parted the waters so that they 
the Israelites make pass through in dry, on dry land. And so water has a long history in the church of being used and continuing that story as the Israelites went through the desert. They had a stone that Moses struck and water came out. So it's a wonderful opportunity to bless this new stone with holy water. So first a prayer over the water. Lord God, as you give us life, we pray that this water would be for us a symbol of life and of hope. And as we bless this stone, may it be for us a symbol of all those who have given their lives in the past and will continue to do so as we move forwards by serving in our armed forces. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we bless this stone in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. May all those who come to this place remember the service of those in, who have given their lives in the past and commit themselves to serve monarch and country moving forwards. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Most merciful and everlasting God, Remember those you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. Grant that we, being faithful till death, may receive with them the crown of life that never fades. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now we come to our act of remembrance. Great, great. Church! Let's remember before God and commend his sure keeping. Those who have died for their country in conflict. Those whom we knew and those whose memory we treasure. And all who have lived and died in the service of humanity. They shall not grow old as weeds are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Praise the night. Ace. And to conclude a blessing for every one of us gathered here today. God grant the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king and the commonwealth and all humanity, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. That concludes the service and thank you very much to all those who come along. Um, uh, Kenneth, again, thank you to you and all the team. Dear, and thank you very much. Um, we'd love to join, uh, please everyone join us for a cup of tea and coffee and cake afterwards. And may I ask our American colleagues to come on over and we'll just get a quick photo recognising the extraordinary involvement of our US colleagues while, uh, in the war. Thank you. Gentlemen, if you come on over here.